Greetings, everybody. We have gathered around the table again today, and it's going to be a little bit weird today, I think. Three-man show. Yep, yep, three-man show. This isn't what we asked for. <laughs> um, the Canadian weather is trying to kill people right now. It is. It is brutal out there. There's something like minus 39 with wind chill, and due to that, uh, some trains weren't running, some buses weren't running, so we're down a member today. Um, no, no, I'm just going to say Paul just blessed out. <laughs> that's that's totally fair. That's totally fair. But they were saying lows of up to minus fifty over this weekend that we just had. So um, that's what you get in the North Pole, not in Calgary, Alberta. Hopefully, so, <laughs> yes. um, they refer to it as a polar vortex. I heard that term being thrown around. Yeah. I love it. I love polar it. your vortex. Please don't. <laughs> Please never do that. <laughs> Sounds like a superhero move. <laughs> kind of. Oh, I want to talk about something else. <laughs> I'm so bucket ups. I'm carrying a Sabenza today. <laughs> Excellent. It's yeah, it's awesome. I've talked With to your F1, but... <laughs> Yeah. Your your movie. clone. <laughs> you keep claiming is the real thing. Yeah. You shush. <laughs> it acts like S thirty five. It's a damn good clone if that's the case. I've got my chaparral with the Raffir Nobel scales on it and all its prettiness. Not a clone. Not a clone, no. There's, no. They do say S-35 is the new Chinese super steel. <laughs> I'm just saying. Like, you're just keeping up with the trends, right? Uh, last but not least, Sleesh Bowie, Slish Bowie, Swish Bowie, Swish Bowie. I don't know. I think I've covered all the bases on the Sleeshes is, is, is. We'll figure it out at some point. So, and yes, the clip's on the wrong side, and that's so I can finger flick it better than the rest of you. Yeah, <laughs> sucker. Do you still right. carry it in the right hand pocket? No! <laughs> that's silly. Why would I do that? It's not like I'm a Semenza and I'm forced to do it or something. <laughs> Don't worry about it. <laughs> so, today, we have a fun little offering from Spider Co. It is a one that was very hyped up. Lots of good things said about the first version at least, and we have the Techno 2, the long-awaited second little version from uh, Martin Schlitz. So with a weight of 3.4 ounces, it would take about a hundred of these little guys to equal the weight of the average Dachshund. Wiener dog. I'd like to see you throw one of those into a sock. <laughs> And dash out. Yeah. Big <laughs> And animal rights comments. <laughs> he thought Cedric and Ada had it bad reviewing his cat. I was I was expecting it to turn into like the the dash hound sack again. Oh, I was like going to mention about kangaroo sacks. Oh, no. But a hundred of these, I'm not going to be able to fly with those. That's no. a terrible idea. Well, I don't know. Is it, it's, under, is it under six centimeters for the blind like? It's the weight. It's the weight. <laughs> <laughs> They're way too heavy. They'll just drag us down. Yeah. Oh. True story. It's terrible. But then you went on to a sack of dash hounds. <laughs> and all of a sudden... Don't think about it too hard. <laughs> it's scrolling PETA comments. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. Indeed. So yes, don't worry folks, there's no dogs in socks. We don't <laughs> own any dogs. We don't have either. I don't know about you, but I have socks. Yes. <laughs> Speak for yourself. I think we've got to talk about the dress code around here. <laughs> Q bare feet up on the table. <laughs> well, thank you. Oh. <laughs> so with a length of 5.99 inches, Nine. It takes uh, about 20 of these to equal the length of a Volkswagen Beetle. I think I'd rather have I think I'd rather have the knives to be honest. I like the Beetle. I like Beetle, but yeah. you know, it's eh, I like knives mm -hmm. more. Kind of almost has a Beetle shape to it. Oh, kind of. <laughs> yeah. What's the equivalent of anthropomorphic? Like automorphic, where something resembles a car? I guess so, yeah. Yeah. Pull up to a stop line next to a beetle. You want to race? <laughs> <laughs> a giant Techno 2 with wheels. <laughs> that would be fun. Or just a regular size Techno 2 with wheels. <laughs> or a hundred of them. And because it's the custom version, when he asks what's under the hood, it's just thousands of mice on treadmills. <laughs> no, no, spiders. 
The name of the custom knife is the mouse. Fair enough. I was making a joke, you Fine. fucker. <laughs> also, thousands of spiders turn. That's terrifying. <laughs> I want no part of that. The Volkswagen Beetle <laughs> guy is like, what just pulled up next to me? <laughs> All I see are hundreds of little spider legs mm -hmm. and a small squeaking sound. <laughs> Why are you wearing a pirate hat? <laughs> like it's... I have to have an eye patch, too. We are... <laughs> nine nine. <laughs> a twist on a good thing. He wanted to make it a better thing. Mm -hmm. I think it succeeded. Yep. I. Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, yep. Uh, kind of changed up the blade profile from more of the uh, spear point that the first version was to a little bit more Warren Cliffy sort of a blade to it. Um, other major note is the green barrel spacers as opposed to the uh, blue black uh, blue back spacer that it used to have. Yes. Yeah, blue G10. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I think this goes back to the original custom version of his mouse. I really do like it. I think the original one was a, almost a collaboration between the Marcine mouse and Spider Coast twist on it. And the Techno 2, they went back to much more of what the original custom version looks like. Cool. Um, yeah, and I think they did a good job. Of mm -hmm. it. Yeah, it's very well executed for sure. I normally don't care for tiny frame locks, and I think that this one handles very, very, very nicely. Uh, the smoothness that I feel when I'm unlocking my Sebenza is mirrored here. They did a wonderful job. With the disengagement, like there's barely any lock stick. It's more just mm -hmm. friction, really. Um, oh, and you heard it here first, folks. We don't mind that those are green backspacers. <laughs> We're probably the only people on YouTube who think this, but. You're just going to cut the video down to three minutes and see <laughs> everything right now, and we don't even need to worry about it. No. Maybe our viewers will like no. that because our videos are too long as it is. But still. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to get it out there. I think that this is a really cool little knife. Mm -hmm. um, I like the backspacer idea. I, the green, blue, whatever it may be. I, I didn't like the blue G10 backspacer no. as much. I don't know if this is 100% of what my change would have been on, on mm. the green. Yours would have been gray or black. We, we already know that. <laughs> you, don't um, like, you don't like color. There is a reason I'm carrying the sleeve Bowie today, and with even the black backspacer that it's got, I do like the nice plain boring mm. if they had to just change to that if they have had to kept the blue theme i would have been okay with that but i'm glad they went to barrel spacers instead of that blue g10 anything but the blue g10 it was a bit obnoxious despite the color that backspacer was just so chunky yeah like yeah, I, yeah i found it awkward i find this a lot more pleasing of a design to it or streamlined um, like, mm -hmm. yeah probably partially because the other thing that they recently did on the techno 2 is they significantly reduced the blade thickness mm -hmm. on this guy compared to the the techno one which was like sword thickness it was it ridiculous was four and a half millimeters on the original this is looking at three and a half much more reasonable they only shaved a mil yeah i thought it was more than that to tell you the truth um but even still, it's a noticeable difference when you're holding it mm -hmm. for the people who have held the original Techno mm -hmm. compared to the Techno 2. That's definitely the first thing you notice. Still a substantial little knife, even at 3.5 mil. It's still, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but with the thickness of that blade stock, that was the other. That was what I was saying, is the thickness of the blue G10 as well made it that much thicker. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it just stood out. <laughs> like, Nigel's got a ZT456. That, mm -hmm. It has a blue backspacer, doesn't it? Yep, yep, it does, but it's not... Yeah, but because it's a little bit thinner and stuff, it's not as obnoxious that's, as the yeah. first Nick yeah. was. Yeah, yeah. For, better, for better or for worse, that Techno 1 backspacer <laughs> popped. Mm -hmm. And I don't mind a little splash of color, like a tiny splash of color. I think that's cool. Yeah, it was just... It was loud. 
Yeah. In the same way that I think those those custom knives I keep seeing with the solid Moku tie handles, mm-hmm. like it's loud. It's <laughs> almost noisy. Well, it's funny you should say that because we have a version of the custom mouse that I already sent to Nile. <laughs> oh man. And it is damn a steel tie mask <laughs> all to help help it's Paul's wet dream. Oh man. Which is maybe why he stayed home tonight. <laughs> but... It's a clean up. It's <laughs> terrible. Dirty. Um well shit. Maybe okay. Maybe the Techno One was a little bit closer in some ways to the original, but I think this is a step in the right direction. Honestly, mm-hmm. I think Me too. I think the Techno One um, really was an introduction for Marcin Sleesh into the knife world, into the production knife world, and it was something that was out there to really wow people, like the Seabird MPR. Mm-hmm. Yeah, same idea. I have one upstairs. I should grab it. I'm probably not going to grab it, but <laughs> yeah. But it makes a statement. Same like, idea. Yeah. And then with like the introduction, and then you go with uh, with the pinnacle knife that still to this day people are weekly offers for taking this <laughs> off my hands. Which no, I'm still not selling <laughs> it. But I and then the Spidey Chef. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's been another stupid popular knife out of Spider Co. lately. And... Well, and it just carried on to the, the popularity of Marcin Sleesh. And then also something experimental, but also something very comfortable with the people that know Spider Co. with the yeah. Salt mm-hmm. Series, with the, hey, we're going to take a Salt Series next level, with a guy that already has some waves in the he's got He's got some acclaim. And yeah. He, yeah, like their, their power plays to get to the point where they're coming out with the Techno 2, like Bravo and Spyderco for making those power plays, for sure. They were smart. And it's the old tried and true game that Spyderco's been playing for a long time, taking a custom knife, reiterating it with their with their own take on it. Mm-hmm. Like, and it's, it's a really cool progression to see that transform over time. Um, something we didn't mention right off the bat, quick price point on this bad boy, I think roughly two and a quarter US MRS, MSR. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> um, Scales are okay. <laughs> and materials basically titanium, titanium standoffs, titanium wire clip, XHP for the steel on the blade rundown. Um, love XHP. It's tried and true. I'll take it over S35, even though they kind of claim that S35 is still superior. I, I maybe question that myself. Fair enough. Yeah. But yeah. Um, for me, what does the price point is really the quality control of it and the fit and finish. And I, that's where it becomes justifiable, but I still find it a bit high of a price point for, for how small of a knife it is in my mind. Yeah. yeah, just on the note of the fit and finish of these guys, the consistency of them is supreme. Um, pretty much they're getting up to the level of the Chris Reeve sorts of consistency where just beautifully done, very well made, perfectly centered, yeah, great little knives. I think it's a testament to the Taichung factory, Mm -hmm. for sure, but I also almost wonder whether the the Marcin designs in particular, whether it's a Spidey Chef, whether it's a Bowie, whether it's a Techno, whether they get a little extra time a day just to make sure that Everything lines up beautifully. Mm, it would certainly explain the uh, somewhat inflated price point, at least upon first inspection, the somewhat inflated price point. Because you're looking at, a, like you say, about two and a quarter American for this guy. Um, but it is a simplistic design. It's executed very well. Um, there's not a lot where, uh, even in Sebenza, for instance, you're working with a lot of flat planes. Mm-hmm. So as long as you've you've got your setup done correctly, it's a very straightforward, I won't say simple or easy, but it's a very straightforward uh, recipe to follow. And I'm guessing it's probably similar to, to the Bowie where this thing is like almost encouraged to take apart. It's, mm. it's, you can take it apart 50 times, you can throw it together or back together 50 times and it'll always lock up just absolutely beautifully every single time. And that's my experience so far with the Sleesh designs. Yeah. And from what I've seen on all the reviews, all the forums, it seems to be the same way. A lot of guys doing uh, custom hardware for the Techno 1. I haven't seen too, too much for the Techno 2. I, I assume that it exists. Uh, but I think that kind of supports that idea that, yeah, this is a very straightforward, easy to play with design. Yeah. <laughs> and, and even in disassembly videos, I haven't seen very many hiccups where guys are frustrated with 
reassembling because it's not centered or both. Like it's here we go. It's Here's a nice knife again, type of thing, right? Which is a good thing. Absolutely. As far as fit in the hem and stuff like that, I don't know. I, I find it awkward. Personally, it's in a, a mini Gertillion range for you. Yeah, it's not quite big enough for a comfy three finger grip, so it's just yeah, it's it's odd. I'm not sure. I kind of um, do, but kind of don't like it. For an XL hand or even a double XL hand, might be hard. Yeah. Uh, long skinny fingers, like tall lanky boys, absolutely love it. I can just barely get the four with with the fist. If I wanted to go back, I would get it into a three finger. And with a pinch a lot, I think you're going to do that, especially with the hole. Mm -hmm. You can get a really nice pinch with that hole for the tip. A hole which is nicely rounded, by the way. Uh, it's chamfered nicely. Yeah, they yeah. started to do that very well. Pinch that nice round hole. Oh, I'll pinch it all right. Uh, three f <laughs> thanks <laughs> for me it's a pretty solid three finger um, I feel like if I were to try and choke up it, it a little bit pinchy mm -hmm. um, the jimping I quite like uh, from what I remember of the techno one the jimping was quite chunky mm -hmm. and kind of very widely spaced like a benchmade atom ass <laughs> kind of like, yeah. tanky I like this fine jimping mm -hmm. I like this fine jimping I like it's, that fine jimping yeah. it's um, not aggressive but because no. of how fine it is it's lots of surface area to get traction on it's a comfortable sort of grip mm -hmm. um, and even the swoop after the jimping if yes. For people that yes. do have a longer finger, things like that, you can get down on that, and that locks you in really nicely too, because they're jimping at the end of it to mm -hmm. lock your thumb onto that yeah. area as well, right? If so people talk about indexing to know where you are in a blade. I think that's a really nice thing that they left that ridge right at the top there, just so that that little bit of a ridge. Mm -hmm. I don't know something about that's really tactile, and I really dig it. Um, I think we should go briefly into some negatives. Because there's a couple. There's yeah. not many uh, for what it is, but there is a couple for sure. So um, Joel pointed one out to me right when it came in. Uh, I don't know if you remember what it is or not, but... I'm going to pretend to remember. <laughs> <laughs> you got nothing? You if, got I, nothing? if I looked at it long enough, I probably would, but for the sake of time... Well, so what's your hmm. negative on your... Like, what would you say is a negative on this knife? Uh, the thing we I, we noticed just a little while ago uh, kind of bugs me that there isn't the same chamfering from side to side on the holes or the lanyard hole. It's so in weird. Particular. Um, we think it might be a cost a time-saving measure just because they have the relief here, they have the chamfering on the side of the lock, uh, the lock relief, but um, on this side you have some nice chamfering in the screw holes, in the lanyard hole, where the pocket clip lays. Inconsistency there, even but... even when the where the wire clip lays on yeah. the face side of the yeah. titanium knife. Mm, yeah, me and Dennis think it's a bit of a lack of thought towards the left-handed people. Uh, it's a little bit of a backhanded slap yeah. to the guys that are like, you know, <laughs> yeah. might want to make this side the show side, and they're like, we're not going to chamfer this hole. We're not going to chamfer this hole. We're not going to chamfer this hole. You know the nice little detail about how they chamfered these wire little slots on the other side? We're not going to do that on this side. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're not going to bother for you guys. We're, Screw that. We're going to do it on this side. I think because this is the pretty side. I think they kind of threw you guys, particularly you two, under the bus with this. Um, That's pretty usual. I'm pretty sure it must have originated as a cost-saving, time-saving measure. Uh, just thinking about the relief cuts. They're chamfering the frame lock. Yeah, that's what I mean. They took the time to do this, so they're not taking the time to do those. But my, it's already set up. My point is, if it's already <laughs> clamped on this, I'm side, just yeah. guessing here. I really angle. don't yeah. have any answers for you. <laughs> <laughs> so why not, Joe? Come on, you should know all Spider Coast manufacturing <laughs> the secrets. The one thing that oh, you yeah. pointed out to me that still sticks out to me a little bit when this knife first came in is how thin oh, yeah. this cutout is on this frame line. The more I play with it, the less I mind, but it does. It kind of stands out. It's a little weird that that frame if is so thin. You are able to thin. zoom in there. Yeah. And just right off the top of my head, my guess is just going to be because of the leverage factor for how long the lock bar is. Let's get that in frame. How long it is, and then how thick the scales are in order yeah. for that titanium to bend properly. Mm -hmm. It doesn't shock me, um, but any inferior company other than Spyderco to make their cutout on a frame yeah. that thin would be some cause for concern. So Trust, for sure. trust Spyderco to keep this going correctly, but maybe not with uh, some others. 
And in one other review where they were saying whether there's a travel stop or not, it's a spider coat. Don't overbend it because you own a spider coat. You should know better. Yeah. And that's all I'm going to say. Traditional Reeve and, and integral lock. If you're not going to care about it knobbing on a Sabenza, maybe you shouldn't mind that it's not on a spider coat. Yeah. yeah. You know, don't be picky. Don't be picky. <laughs> stop complaining. Pretty much for me, the only negatives are the size of it that just doesn't fit so it doesn't really do anything for me and then just the pickiness of the chamfer tolls there if i were somebody who was going to complain <laughs> about okay just thinking about yeah deep carry pocket clips no for no, a no, no 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 he's he's no. looking at the size oh, okay fine. i'm looking at cutting ability yeah, i'm well, looking at I'm, handle you've got a secondary finger choil so. yeah just looking at even just from the primary choils there just how it's shaped i actually get held in at the end there mm. So I do actually get the full three fingers on, whereas That's... this guy, how it slopes down, slopes I'm getting off. pushed off, so it's not comfortable. So that sweep really does help you. Yeah, yeah. Fair so, enough. So you really just need to put your thumb in the hole. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes. Doing it up as a pinch grip and stuff <laughs> like that, that works pretty nicely if I get right up into that nicely rounded hole. <laughs> those, those of you who care about that sort of thing, yeah, the pocket clip's are lower than the lanyard hole, but get over it. I mean, it's... It's such a small amount of knife to be hanging out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they switched to the Techno 1 compared to the Techno 2. The Techno 1 had the clip over on this side kind of canting on an angle with the lanyard hole over here. The Techno 2 lined everything up properly like it should be, and then people bitched about it. Yeah. So <laughs> I really, I don't know. I think I think it works just fine. Mm -hmm. um, having put it in the pocket a few times, it doesn't feel uncomfortable. It doesn't feel like it's poking up too much. It's... And I mean, people talking about this not being deep carry because there's a lanyard hole. Like, I should go upstairs and get my like mini onslaught from Benchmade <laughs> that has an inch and a quarter of handle <laughs> sticking up on it. That thing's a bit of a monster. Though. And it's not even a new or not even that old of a knife. It's within the last decade, and they were still doing stuff that high of a carry on knives. So. Oh. People complaining about that little switch up is silly in my mind because. As far as having a lanyard, that's where it's functional. Yeah, you need it to be there. Yeah. Unless you're going to do something like have an integrated backspacer, you really do need that hole yeah. to be and, at that four point. Yeah, and having it where the clip is now was just like that wasn't a functional lanyard spot in my mind. It was yeah, awkward. Yeah, which is kind of funny because that's where the PM3 lanyard hole is, is up in that weird spot. Yeah, <laughs> and it's <Yes>. weird. <laughs> Can you imagine putting a knife into that grip and your lanyard is right here digging into your palm? Yeah. It's like, don't worry about it. Oh, I'm worried. <laughs> well, not anymore. The you're not actually cutting kind of anything. You're just correctly. taking fancy Instagram pictures. Yeah. <laughs> so that, that's why you have a lanyard bead on it in the first place. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Owie, ouch. <laughs> Throwing some shade Ooh. there. Excellent. I'm starting to try to start shit. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. If, you know, that's what you do. Yep. I don't know. Overall, it's a pretty hard... Uh, well, it's a hard night for me to complain about. Like, it's... They, they did a lot of things right. I can understand having Nigel's hands being a bit mm, kind of yeah. weird about it, but no, I, it's incredibly well built. It's nice and solid. Yep. Not much negative to say. Mm -hmm. I think into the final grading yeah, yeah. system of what we've got. And we are actually going to give you a rundown of specifics on grading, but not yet. We're still working on the algorithm. <laughs> Eventually. Yes. <laughs> The algorithm requires more beer, <laughs> just for the record. Or vodka. Yeah. Nah, true. Beer. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> vodka. <laughs> but anyway, on my own personal grading system, I let you guys mystery it up the last time. I'm going to give this a A-. minus. Um, I have to dock it a little bit for cost, obviously, is the biggest mm -hmm. thing more than anything else. Um we are talking about a cutting ability and probably a little thick behind the edge, but it's a stout knife and people buying it should realize they're getting a stout knife in the first yeah. place. So, um, but yeah, price point a little bit high, but again, with the Marcine Slish stuff, so it's still in the A category. Uh, I can't give it a knock it out of the park. I'm in love with it. I, I will probably own one, so I'm going to put it into an A category. For me, uh, personal feelings about the size of it and the ergos and stuff knocked it down a whole bunch. Um, fit and finish and the execution of this guy is fantastic but 
it just does nothing for me. So I met like a C C minus. The styling is, yeah. is is definitely a low ranking yeah. in your grading system. Yeah, yeah. Styling, the size of it, how it feels in hand, it just yeah, it just falls short for me. And when I say styling, we should pop up a picture of the four, five, six, <laughs> just because I'm a dick. But Joe, what's your grading on that? Oh man. Um... <laughs> I'm caught, honestly, between like an A minus B plus sort of category. Like it's, it's a really freaking cool knife. It's very well made. There's not, like I said earlier, not a lot that I can knock it for. Um, would I buy it? I like larger knives a lot of the time. <laughs> um, so it's hard for me to say. Uh, but there's, there's nothing wrong with it. It's yeah, it's thick behind the edge. It's kind of like a. Yeah, it is. <laughs> but like a harder use That's small juicy. knife. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit of a shit kicker. Like it's a you you could put this through some paces, you know, and it's um Yeah, but because of the size, I think I'm kind of siding with Nigel a little bit. This is just a little bit subcompact. Um and three hundred dollars for a subcompact knife like this, if I'm not like raving in love with the design, I'm not saying it's a bad design, it's just not something that really reaches out and grabs me and is like, mm -hmm. yo, this is amazing. Well, you know? for the smaller knife category, there really is a niche market of the guys who really, really love them and the guys who don't. Uh, the Olamic Buskers, the yeah. the most knives, the, the thicker little tanks, the NPR that I own, right? Mm -hmm. Like, it's, it's an opinion thing on the love and the hate. And, yeah, it's yep. definitely not the, the standard four-inch, three-and-a-half-inch EDC that you get, right? So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I think that pretty much sums it all up. So this was our little look at the Techno 2. Uh, Final note before we forget, because... Oh, yes, we, yes, we, as we, I was about to. We want to thank? No, no, as I, as I was about to forget. Oh, as you were about to forget. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we want to thank the Cutting Edge, because Cutting Edge oh. Cutlery gave us this knife for us to review. Uh, blind out of box, none of us got to actually check this one out, so it's <laughs> we we didn't take the best of the best. We got an honest opinion of it, You're whether right. it's biased on our personal opinions or not. But. Yeah, I don't know, man. We, we wiped the packing grease off of it because we took it out of the box. We certainly did. I love the way that that oil looks with the plastic on the titanium. <laughs> There's something about a knife nerd when you see that sealed knife pressed against the plastic that it's a Christmas morning feeling, for mm -hmm. sure. So, but Yeah, on that note, we will wrap it all up. Hope you guys all enjoyed this episode. Uh, make sure to like, thank, subscribe, share, and do all that fun stuff. And we will see you again next week. This is Nigel the Smith signing out. Uh, I am who I am. I'm Dennis Vipers. And I am the Iron Joe. We will catch you again. Take care.